Welcome to another live English lesson. So today we only have three students. Why? Where are the others? I have told you that today's lesson is gonna be at 5 p.m., right? So where are the others? Okay, however, last time we studied lesson one of unit seven, right? So, before we begin, I want to make sure that um, you can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. So last time we studied lesson one of unit seven, right? Have we done the exercise of lesson one, unit seven? Have we? I think we haven't, right? So let us do this exercise of lesson one, unit seven. As you remember, unit, uh, we, when we talked about unit seven, we said that it speaks about the world around us. And the first lesson speaks about the uh, world problems, global problems, problems all around the world. And we studied and read six troubles or sorry, problems um, concerning the global warming, um, the litters, and um, some animals who are found dead. Now, this is another exercise. Uh, as you remember, we studied how to differentiate between um, a headline and a sentence. We said that uh, some headlines are not complete sentences. They have some missing words and uh, articles. Now here we have these sentences. We should turn it into headlines. So here the first one, the moving desert is swallowing up Iraq. What is meant by swallowing? What is meant by swallowing Iraq? Now we have newcomers. For the newcomers, we are speaking about the exercise of lesson one, unit seven. It's on page 95 of your activity book. Yes, so the moving desert is swallowing up Iraq. So this speaks about the deserts and the sand. Write the sentence as a headline. It should be written as moving desert swallowing Iraq. Right? So the first one should be moving desert swallowing Iraq. Number two, a green team are cleaning up Iraq's street. It should be, if you remember when we talked about the headlines of lesson one of your student's book on page 72, we said that the headlines miss 
certain words, we said that there are certain missing words in the headlines, uh, which were the articles, right? Uh, um, and the, and uh, some verbs. So you should just take these articles and words from these sentences to change them into headlines. So here you say a green team cleaning Iraq street. Yes, you have to omit the A too. So it becomes a green team cleaning Iraq street. Right? The third one, the number of wild le uh, leopards is in sharp decline. What is meant by decline? Yes, true, it is, yes, exactly. So Zainab says, wild le uh, leopards in sharp decline. Yes, that's true, wild leopards in sharp decline. And the other one, water pollution is a huge danger to the local population and wildlife. It should be water pollution a huge danger to local population and wildlife. You should omit the verb, okay? We have a newcomer, okay. So let us now move to lesson two of your student's book. So, lesson two is titled, How Can We Help? Basically, it speaks about poverty in Africa as a world problem. As you know, there are many poor countries in Africa. Many people there don't have enough food to eat, and they are dying of sickness and lack of food. Let us read this article which makes Sarah very upset. By the way, what is meant by upset? What is meant by upset? I'm gonna write it. Yes, exactly. So she's upset because of what she has read. So, why was Sarah upset? She was upset to find out that people in Africa don't even have $100 to send their children to school for a year. So, in the first sentence, before that, let us just read them, read the article, sorry. In many African countries, people have to pay to go to school. Unfortunately, many parents are too poor to do this. So their children must go without education. This is very bad for their future and for the future of Africa. Did you know that just $100 will pay for one African child to go to school for a year? So, uh, I think it's a clear for you. But as a matter of fact, before going forward to another subject, if we check this article, in the first sentence we have have to, what is meant by have to? People have to pay. People have to pay. Yes. So, do you know any other word which can replace this have to? Can we express this idea without using the have to construction? There is something. 
Yes, exactly, should, or. Must. And no, not will, Dima. Should or must. So now, let us move to the information or grammar box at the bottom of the page. Should and must. We use should to give advice. Like, for example, you should work harder. You'll get better marks in your exam. I think you remember when we studied how to give an advice, right? So we use should to give an advice. Must is stronger than should. It means have to or have got to. Example, you must work harder. If you don't, you'll fail your exam. So, must and should. It's a clear, right? You can see what is written here. Okay. So, we use must to talk about what? Obligation and prohibition. What is meant by obligation? When you are obliged, for example, to do something. And I tell you that you are obliged to do something. What is meant by obligation? So, obligation, I must do my homework. Prohibition, you mustn't walk on the grass in the park. It is forbidden. So what is meant by prohibition? Yes, exactly. So we use must when we want to say that you, that you have no other choice but doing this thing. And we use mustn't for I mean it's the negative one right negative form of must and if must refers to obligation of course mustn't or must not refers to prohibition and we use should for what to give advice as we said you should eat healthy food it's good for you or you shouldn't stay up uh, till late. So, what do we call these th these two? We call them. We call them. We call them. What do we call these two? Must and should. Models or modal verbs, and what is meant by modal verbs? I'm gonna write it in the chat section. Just like the auxiliary verbs, modal verbs. Okay, so now. Let us get back to the student's book. Here, uh, we have a conversation between these girls. Let us listen to them. And I'm going to ask you certain questions. Unit 7, Lesson 2, Track 43, Listen and Read. We should do something. No, we must do something. 
But what? We must collect money to send some children to school. I know. Let's have a bring and buy sale. What's that? Everyone brings something to be sold, and everyone buys something. That's a great idea. We can advertise it in the school magazine. Wonderful. I have some CDs. I'll bring those. I can help. I'll bring some plants. I grow them in our garden. And I have lots of clothes. I'll bake some cakes. Wait, wait. Where are we going to have this sale? In the school playground, I hope. Let's go and ask the headmistress. Good idea. So, what does Leila suggest they should do? What does Leila suggest they should do? Can you hear me now? I'm asking you, what does Layla suggest to do? Layla told them to collect money, to send money to children's school, okay. She suggests, yes, she, she suggests having a bring and buy a sale, right? What is meant by bring and buy sale? Do you have any idea? If you Google it, you'll learn about it. It's... Um, um, a charity sale where people bring items for sale and buy those brought by others. So it's all about charity. Okay, what is meant by charity? Okay, I have many other questions, but I think that you're not ready. So what does Sarah offer to bring? What does Sarah offer to bring? What does Sarah offer? Ah, yeah, CDs. Come on, be quick. Be quick. Where are they going to hold the sale? Where are they going to hold the sale okay so whom do they have to ask first and what is meant by headmistress Yes, exactly. So now I want you to find some examples um, from page 73 of sentences containing must. Can you? We must do something, right? Exactly. So, as you know, we use must to refer to what? What did we say? To obligation. So, how to use it in the sentence? It comes after the subject and before the main verb. And the main verb should be in its root form. Right? Yes, exactly. 
So now let us move to the activity book. We have this exercise of lesson two. You have to underline the strong syllables in these words. But uh, you're going to listen to these words and you have to underline the strong syllables. Track 44. Something. Advertise. Everyone. Playground. Headmistress. Let me play it again. Track 44. Something. So which syllable is it wrong? Or is it stronger in something? How many syllables do we have in the word something? Yes, you can answer me, Dima. Something. You should say if, for example, it is the first syllable or the second syllable, but you're just mentioning the letters. We are speaking about the syllables, not the letters, okay? Let me play it again. Track 44. Something. Something. Advertise. It's okay, Dima. Advertise. Which one is stronger? The first one. Everyone. No, Omar, not like that. Playground. Headmistress. It's okay if you cannot do this. If we have time, inshallah, in the future, we will do it in the classroom. Now let us do exercise B. We have to complete these sentences with should or must. Number one, we do our homework. Sometimes, pay attention that sometimes it is difficult to say which of these models is correct because it depends on the attitude of the speaker. So for example, the first one, you can either say must or should. Both of them is uh, correct for the first one. The second one, we eat five pieces of fruit or vegetables every day. We should eat five pieces of fruit or vegetables every day. Number three, people do what they say they are going to do. They should, right? The people should do what they say they are, they are going to do. Now the other one, you wear a seat belt on a plane when it is taking off and landing.
must, right? So you should say, you must wear a seat belt on a plane when it is taken off or landing. Why? Because it is an obligation. You have no other choice. Because if you don't, the flight attendant will do it for you because you don't have any other choice. You must wear a seat belt on a plane. The last one, you take a test before you can drive a car. Again, must. You must take a test before you can drive a car because you don't have any other choice, right? Now let us move to, do we have any other exercise? I don't think so. Uh, yes, we have exercise C. So here in exercise C, we are going to listen to some girls who are discussing with each other what they can bring to the sale to the bring and buy sale listen to the conversation and write down what each girl offers to bring and the time of the sale track 45 what are the three girls going to bring to the bring and buy sale? Listen and write notes. Part 1 Hello, Sarah. I hear there's going to be a bring and buy sale. Yes, that's right. Well, I'll bring a camera. A camera? Isn't that a bit... It's all right. I've just got a new one. But the old one still works. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Suhad. When's the sale? On Monday at four o'clock. Fine. See you then. Part two. Hi, Sarah. I heard about the bring and buy sale. I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Wissal. I'd like to help. I've got lots of books. I'll bring the ones I've read. That's wonderful. People always buy books. When do you want them? Oh, uh, just before the sale, please. When is it? On Monday at four o'clock. All right. I'll bring them at quarter to four. Fine. Thanks very much. Part three. Hello, Sarah. I hear you need some things for the bring and buy sale. Yes, we do, we're Dad. Well, I think I can help. Oh, good. I have a lovely doll, but I don't play with it anymore. A doll would be lovely. There's sure to be a child who'll want it. That's what I thought. Shall I take it to your house? Uh, no, thanks. Just bring it to the playground, please. At about quarter to four. All right. Bye for now. Bye, we're Dad. So, you have just heard three conversations of Sarah with um, other girls, Suhad, Wissal, and Widad. So, what does Suhad decide to bring? A camera, yes, a camera, not a cameras. Yes, exactly. And what does Wissal decide to bring? Some books, yes, exactly. And now what does we dad decide to bring? A doll. Yes, exactly. And now, number two, when are they going to hold the sale?
when are they going to hold the sale? When and not where? I'm asking about the time. Okay, it's on Monday at four o'clock. Yes, four o'clock on Monday. That's right. So we are going to skip exercise D and move to, what is this? Now, this is um, uh, about writing a letter and we have to skip it too. So now let's move to lesson three in your student's book. What is the title of lesson three? Animals in danger. So these animals are in danger. What is meant by in danger? When we say in danger. Yes, exactly. So what makes them in danger? What are the reasons that they are in danger? Let us read what is written on page 74. Snow leopard. The fur of this beautiful animal is a gray with biggish black spots and much smaller spots. Nobody knows exactly how many there are but there are very few. It is hunted for its fur. Ibex. This mountain goat is hunted for its horns. They are 70 to 140 centimeters long. Its coat is reddish brown, is reddish brown to grayish brown. If it is not protected, it will be uh, sorry, it will soon disappear. Blue whale. This is the largest animal alive today. It is a 29 meters long. Whales were hunted for their oil and almost disappeared. Now they are protected. Golden toad. The male is bright gold in color. The female is much darker. People are draining water from the places where they live. When the water goes completely, the golden toad will disappear. Tiger. The tiger has beautiful yellow and black fur. It looks like the sun shining through the trees and helps the tiger hide in the forest. There are now fewer than 4,000 tigers in the wild because tigers were hunted for their skins. Now we are going to end this um, meeting and I want you to come back, okay? so that we can complete studying lesson three. Okay, I want you to come back. Okay, see you in a minute. New and interesting species are being found on a daily basis, but on the other end of the spectrum, many species that we already know and love are now in danger of extinction. So join us as we count 10 amazing animals in danger of extinction. Number 10. Snow Leopard. These rare, beautiful grey leopards live in the mountains of Central Asia. They are insulated by thick hair and their wide, fur-covered feet act as natural snowshoes. Snow leopards have powerful legs and are tremendous leapers, able to jump as far as 50 feet or 15 meters. They use their long tails for balance and as blankets to cover sensitive body parts against a severe mountain chill. 
While these amazing creatures have adapted to survive in the harshest of conditions, there is one threat they cannot avoid – humans. Snow leopards are often killed by local farms because they prey on livestock such as sheep, goats, horses and yak calves. This has led to the population to decline to between 4,000 and 6,500, which continues to decline. Number 9. Vaquita a name many have never even heard of, Vaquita are the world's rarest marine mammal and are currently on the edge of extinction. This little porpoise wasn't discovered until 1958 and yet today we are on the brink of losing them forever. Vaquita have large dark rings around their eyes and dark patches on their lips that form a thin line from the mouth to the pectoral fins. They are most often found close to the shore in the gulf's shallow waters, though they can quickly swim away if a boat approaches. It is estimated that the Vaquita could be extinct by 2018 if the accidental killings of these animals continue. Nearly one in every five become entangled and drown in gill nets intended for other marine species, leaving today's entire population of the species to be under 100. Number 8. Asian Elephant Asian elephants are the continent's largest terrestrial mammals. They can reach 6.4 meters in length and 3 meters in the shoulders and weigh as much as 5 tons. They are smaller than African elephants and have proportionally smaller ears, which they keep in constant motion in order to cool themselves. They also have a single finger on the upper lip of their trunks as opposed to African elephants which have a second one on the lower lip. Their skin ranges from dark grey to brown with patches of pink on the forehead, the ears, the base of the trunk and the chest. A significant number of male Asian elephants are tuskless. The percentage of males with ivory varies from just 5% in Sri Lanka to around 90% in southern India, possibly reflecting the intensity of past ivory hunting. Number 7. Javan Rhinoceros The Javan Rhinoceros is the most threatened of the five rhino species with only 57 remaining individuals surviving in Ujung Kulon National Park in Java, Indonesia. Vietnam's last Javan Rhino was poached in 2010. The Javan Rhino is a dusky grey colour and has a single horn of up to 10 inches. Their skin has a number of loose folds giving the appearance of armour plating. This species is very similar in appearance to the closely related Greater One Rhinoceros but has a much smaller head and less apparent skin folds. The population in Ujung Kulon National Park represents the only hope for the survival of a species that is on the brink of extinction. Until the late 19th century and early 20th century, Javan rhinos existed from northeast India and the Sudabans throughout mainland Southeast Asia and on the island of Sumatra. If we lose the population in Java, the entire species will disappear. Number 5. Tiger Tigers are the largest of all the Asian big cats and typically stalk their prey and hunt alone. Being so large, they also have to eat a lot. A single tiger can consume over 40 kilos of meat at one time. The Siberian tigers are the largest subspecies where males can weigh over 300 kilos. Tigers have been known to reach the age of 26 years in the wild, though this is much less likely to be the case now. Tigers have lost 93% of their historical range. Their habitat has been destroyed, degraded and fragmented by human activities. Clearing forests for agricultural uses and timber as well as the building of road networks pose serious threats to the tiger's habitat. As forests shrink away beyond the point of existence, the tigers are forced to hunt domestic livestock, leading them into conflict with human communities and often ending in the death of tigers. Number 6. Polar Bear Polar bears are the largest species of bear on the planet and spend most of their lives on the sea ice of the Arctic Ocean. For this reason, they are actually classified as marine mammals. They have a thick layer of body fat and a water repellent coat that insulates them from the cold air and water. Considered talented swimmers, they can sustain a pace of 6 miles per hour by paddling with their front paws and holding their hind legs flat like a rudder. Because of ongoing and potential loss of their sea ice habitat resulting from climate change, polar bears were listed as a threatened species in the US under the Endangered Species Act in May 2008. Number 4. Soola Another creature you've probably not heard of. 
and that's because it was only recently discovered. The Sarola was discovered in May 1992 during a joint survey carried out by the Ministry of Forestry of Vietnam and WWF in North Central Vietnam. The find proved to be the first large mammal new to science in more than 50 years and one of the most spectacular zoological discoveries of the 20th century. Although the remaining number of these creatures are not known, they are on the critically endangered list due to the Soola's natural habitat being rapidly destroyed to make way for agriculture, plantations and infrastructure. Number 3. Mountain Gorilla Much like their name would suggest, mountain gorillas reside in forests high in the mountains, at elevations of 8,000 to 13,000 feet. Because of this, they have thicker fur and more if compared to great apes. The fur allows them to survive in a habitat where temperatures can often drop below freezing. However, since humans have moved more and more into the gorilla's territory, the gorillas have been pushed farther and farther up into the mountains for longer periods, forcing them to survive through sometimes deadly conditions. Because of this, in 1989, the population of the mountain gorilla decreased to an all-time low of just 620, though by now it has increased slightly back up to 880. There is still much to be done though, and many threats remain for these animals, including disease from human contact, charcoal from harvesting, and accidental poaching by being caught and harmed by snares set for other animals. Number 2. Hawksbill Turtle Hawksbills are named for their narrow, pointed beak. They also have a distinctive pattern of overlapping scales on their shells that form a serrated look on the edges. These coloured and patterned shells make them highly valuable and commonly sold as tortoise shell in markets. Hawksbills are found mainly throughout the world's tropical oceans, predominantly in coral reefs. They feed mainly on sponges by using their narrow pointed beaks to extract them from crevices on the reef, but also eat sea anemones and jellyfish. Due to the accidental capture on fishing hooks and gillnets, as well as illegal wildlife trade selling hawksbill shells, these turtles are now listed as critically endangered and could face extinction if this continued. Number 1. Giant Panda Giant pandas are peaceful animals with a very distinctive black and white coat, and are adored by the world and considered a national treasure in China. They are the rarest member of the bear family and live mostly in bamboo forests high in the mountains of western China, where they live almost entirely on bamboo. They need to eat from 26 to 84 pounds of it every day to keep their body weight. A newborn panda is about the size of a stick of butter, about 1 to 9 hundredth of the size of its mother, but can grow up to 330 pounds as an adult. There are currently between 1,800 and 1,900 left in the wild, a number that will hopefully continue to increase with the panda's protected status. Forest destruction reduces pandas access to the bamboo they need to survive, and hunting remains a threat. Okay, welcome back. So we have read about these animals who are in danger. Now, which animal has horns among these? Which animal has horns? What is meant by horns? Can you hear me? Yes. So which one has horns? Which one of these has horns? The Ibex, yes, exactly. So what do we call the hair on a tiger's body? What do we call hair sorry the hair on a tiger's body fur yes exactly and what is the part of the body under the fur it is the skin right what is meant by skin what is meant by skin 
Do you have a skin? Too? What is meant by skin? Hmm? Yes, exactly. So what what else? So we have another word in the text about the ibex, which means fur. Let me read it again. This mountain goat is hunted for its horns. They are 70 to 140 centimeters long. Its coat is reddish brown to grayish brown. So we have another word which means or which refers to uh, fur, which is coat and not goat. Where's meant by coat? Coat. You have uh, coats, right? You wear coats. I'm gonna write it. No, not goat. Wait for me, please. Yes, exactly, Bashar. And Zainab. So now, there are certain colors mentioned in the text. So, like for example, colors meaning nearly red and nearly gray, for example, nearly red. but it is not fully red, reddish, yes. And nearly gray, grayish. That's it. So I asked you before reading about these animals, what are the reasons that these animals are in danger? What do you think? You can get the information from the text. There are, as a matter of fact, two reasons. The, either they are losing their homes or people are hunting them and killing them for their fur, for example. We have two reasons. For, okay, so which one of these animals uh, we, we can say that they are losing their homes. We mentioned this when we talked about the golden toad, right? So, by the way, where's meant or what is the difference between a toad and a frog? Where's the difference between a toad and a frog? As a matter of fact, they are just the same, but frog uh has um, usually some uh, moist or slimy skin while the toad has dry skin okay now we are also speaking about the skin so now what should we do we should match these animals to where they live in the other page sorry on the other page we should match each animal to its habitat what is meant by habitat it refers to the natural environment of an animal habitat habitat sorry yes so now let us match them to their habitats So what about the snow leopard? 
Where does it live? Where does the uh, snow leopard live? Yes, uh, yes, six. So the snow leopard lives in high cold places. Why? Because there is a snow there and it's called snow leopard, right? And what about the ibex? The ibex, the ibex lives in two, which is the mountain forest. The ibex lives in the mountain forest because it is called a mountain goat. As a matter of fact, it is called a mountain goat. Now, what about the whale? Of course. The blue whale lives in the sea, which is... Number one. <clears throat> so what about the others? We have the toad. Where does the toad live? The golden toad. The golden toad lives in... Three, the wet... The wet lands. Why? Because if you remember, we mentioned something about its habitat we said that it lives in places where the water can be drained okay so what about the others we have um, the tiger where does the tiger live of course it lives in the forest because it says it is not easily seen in the forest We've read such an information in the text. So now let us look at this picture and answer this question. Which animals were killed to make three things in uh, this room? Which animals, what do you think? Tiger, where, where's the tiger? This is the tiger, right? And what else? This is the tiger and what else? What else? The snow leopard, yes. This is the fur of the snow leopard. And we have the ibex, the ibex head with its horns. Um, Omar, I was uh, just reading the question from the page. Which animals were killed to make three things in this room? So these are the three things. This is the leopard, uh, sorry, the tiger. And this is the leopard skin or fur. And this is what the ibex had. So here we have... Um, these two having kind of conversation he says i think the golden toad lives uh, live in toads live in the west wetlands and he's asking why and his answer is toads live near water so he reply with i agree i think you're right so what is meant by agree? You know, right? What is meant by agree? I agree. Yes. So this takes us to the information box at the bottom of the page. Agreeing, I agree, you're right. Or disagreeing, I disagree, you're wrong right 
So now let us move to the activity book. Lesson three. Complete these conversations with the words in the box. Blue whales live in the forest. Do you agree or disagree? And you should say why. And take your answer from the box. What do you think? So I disagree. Why? Blue whales live in in the sea. Yes. Now number two, golden toads live in the desert. I think. How to disagree, you should say. I think you're wrong, yes. Why? Golden toads live in the wetlands, right? Wetlands. Now the third one. Snow leopard live in high cold places. I agree. You're right. Yes, so I agree. You're right. Now, are these sentences true or false? People are still allowed to hunt blue whales. True or false? What do you think? Are people allowed to? Yes, false. Number two, male and female golden toads are different colors. What do you think? Do you have any idea? Okay, so number three, people hunted tigers because they are very dangerous. Is it a true or false? False. So why did people hunt tigers? Why did people hunt tigers? Yes, exactly, for their fur. So now, let us move to the other exercise, uh, sorry, the other lesson, which is lesson four. Here in lesson four, we have this text, um, wait for me, please. Wait for me, please. Okay, so the title of lesson four is Please Keep the Rivers Clean. Now, let us do the, uh, sorry, let us read first the text. And after that, we have to match the paragraphs to its or to their topics. Okay. Iraq with its two great rivers running the length of the country is unable to provide drinking water for most of its people. There are a lot fewer 
fish than there were before. The two rivers are polluted with sewage, rubbish, and industrial waste. Millions of tons of waste go into the rivers and streams every year. This destroys the natural habitats of the wildlife and damages our beautiful rivers. It also causes huge damage to, to health. The river water must be safe for drinking, fishing, swimming, and boating. We can make our rivers safer and healthier for wildlife and people. In fact, everyone should do something to keep the rivers clean. First, we must volunt uh, sorry, we must stop littering. We can make teams of volunteers to pick up the rubbish along the banks. The river will clean itself if we stop littering. Then, we can also lead river cleanup efforts. People can force the government to do something, to stop sewage and waste from factories, hospitals, and power stations flowing into the rivers. Remember, you are the solution to river pollution. If we want to have clean rivers, we must have clean minds. So now we have this text about pollutions in the rivers of Iraq. And we have to match each of these paragraphs. We have many paragraphs here to the topics. What are the topics? These are the topics. So A, this is a topic of which paragraph, what needs to be done? So have you got what you should do? You have two tasks. The first one is to match the appropriate heading with the correct paragraph. And the second one, I will tell you about it afterwards. It's about finding certain words. So which one of these paragraphs speaks about what needs to be done? Do you want me to read it again? Are you sleeping? I think you're sleeping. Okay, so Sidra Omar says the third one. So, according to, to Sidra Omar, the third paragraph of the text speaks about what needs to be done. And, the, I mean, the title or the heading of paragraph number three should be what needs to be done. Yes, you are right. Now, the second heading. Water in Iraq. Which paragraph? The first one, yes, exactly. The first one speaks about the, uh, sorry, water in Iraq. So this is the heading or the headline of the first paragraph. Now the solution, where is the solution? The solution is the last, which is the fourth paragraph. Yes, the last one. The fourth paragraph speaks about the solution. And of course, um, water pollution is in the rivers. It is the second. 
So now let us find these words. A person who does a job without pay to, to add harmful things to water. Three, to drop rubbish. Four, places where animals live. We have certain meaning, certain words, sorry, which mean these things. So, can you find such words in the text? I'm going to tell you. We have a, a word in the text which is volunteers. A volunteer is someone who does a job without pay. Volunteer. You can see it, right? The second one, to add harmful things to water. It is the verb pollute. Which is, uh, and the noun is pollution. Right? Pollute, pollute. I'm going to write it in the chat section. And to drop rubbish, litter. It means to drop rubbish. And the last one, places where animals live, as I told you before, habitat. Right? I know that we are running out of time. We are just have certain uh, exercise. So let us move to the activity book. On page 98, we have this exercise of lesson four. Read the text on page 76 of your student's book and answer these questions. Write short answers. So, name the two great rivers of Iraq. Name the two great rivers in Iraq. Tigris and Euphrates, yes, exactly. And number two, name three negative effects of river pollution. The answer is to destroy, sorry, it destroys wildlife habitats. It damages the rivers and damages the health. No, sorry, damages health without the, okay? I'm going to write it for you afterwards number three name two things that can be done to clean up iraq's rivers stop littering and force government to stop sewage and waste from factories number four name two activities people can enjoy in a clean rivers For example, fishing and swimming, swimming and boating. And the last one, which are three buildings to create sewage and waste in the rivers? Hospitals and factories, or I can say uh, power stations and factories, power stations and hospitals. So that's it for today. Yes, give me a question. No, it is not the last English lesson. You will never get rid of me. I will always be chasing you. So this is not the last English lesson. We have many other things to study. So that's it for today.
Thank you for joining this lesson. And I want you to study lesson five and check out lesson six and uh, the following ones. And see you next time. Have a good day. And have a good weekend. Bye-bye.